Okay, I should be recording now. We're doing a practice run the day before. And we're trying out a new camera. This was kind of unexpected. And quite a surprise. I got a microphone in the mail about six weeks ago. And it said replay microphone and so I know I didn't have that kind of camera but I know that um, my buddy Dave Smyrna Cowboy got one of those from Big Bill and so I figured knowing that I was sending out decals to people I thought that Big Bill had sent me a uh, had sent me a microphone to send to Dave, along with sending him my decals. I'm going to pause a lot here because I'm backing it around. And so I called him up to make sure. And then he told me, something else is going to be coming your way. And I'm like, oh? He's like, yeah. I'm sending you the camera to match the microphone. So I'm like, um, wow. Uh, it's not like I really have a need for a camera. I mean, I've got the GoPro that Navy Thomas gave me, and then I got the another GoPro that I'd gotten on a deal earlier. But he said, no, I want you to have it, and I want you to test it out and see what you think about it. So I will probably make several videos started. Okay. Why are we not? Oh, probably the switch. Yep. Hey, started up really good. So I'll probably be making several test videos with this. And hopefully the sound of the motorcycle isn't totally drowning out the microphone. I'll close down the visor and see if that helps a little bit. See if I can keep it running. Yep, okay. We're in business. I just gotta get my gloves in here. So anyway, my first impression is, um, parts of the replay are rather delicate and you have to use kind of a soft touch. I remember Big Bill had the problem with one of his that some of the pins got bent in the USB connector. And I can definitely see why, because um, if you don't really have a delicate touch and be really careful with it, you certainly will. And, and also the other thing is the threads to the cap that screws on in the back where the microphone attaches. If um, Those could be very easily messed up and cross-threaded too. Okay, <laughs> making sure I didn't forget something. So yeah, between the plug and screwing the cap on the back, you gotta be very careful <laughs> and not damage it. But the rest about it so far seems pretty decent. Now the microphone input, I notice if you read the directions, the microphone input the reason why it requires a powered mic is they also call it a audio line input and I think there's some other kind of accessory you can buy. I don't know really why in the case of this kind of an action camera like this you would you would do that but evidently another accessory does work as a, a line line input and so when you do have something like that Powered mic will go in and do a decent job fed into an audio line input, but it never gives you quite the same volume because the I don't think the impedance exactly matches and it basically just doesn't put out enough voltage to do it really well. So what you end up doing and what I'm sure I'll end up doing with this camera setup is I will just 
boost the audio level in the software. It tends to run about a third as much as what you need. It, it's, it's okay, but it's way down towards the, the bottom one third. But as long as you don't have a lot of background noise, and uh, I don't mean the background noise that it picks up, I mean in kind of any kind of internal noise that the microphone or the electronics itself introduces, then you can usually just boost it back up again in production and it'll work out just fine. There's also some other modifications you make if you're used to working with powered microphones that typically use a one and a half to three volt battery and most of them can easily tolerate up to nine volts and if you can modify it to give it a, about a nine volt boost that'll get it a lot closer to a line input good enough to work and that way you don't need to do so much post-processing on the audio now this original test all I have it is in the general direction of what I think is up and down left and right and as far as even with the horizon we'll we'll see after this test video what's going on with that so the day before the polar bear challenge about 42 degrees now about an hour away from sundown you can see the sun off there this without somebody hitting me I am also using the polar bear challenge as an opportunity not just to test the replay camera that big bill got for me but I'm also testing out the gloves that my buddy Brightex Lonnie got for me um, this isn't really much of a test and even in the lower 40s with the handlebar muffs um, they're not really having to work very hard so this isn't really giving me an indication when it's more down in the 20s then I'll really know how these gloves are for handling the cold but they do have enough dexterity in these muffs at least I'm trying that out that the amount of dexterity of these gloves in the limited room I have inside these handlebar mitts seem to work out fine I can reach all the controls I have no problem so I hope everybody's ready to rock and roll I got my timer set up and oh, there we go try I don't think you even look this way I think this year more than any other year in the Polar Bear Challenge history, I think we have more riders from the U.S. Riders not from the U.S. than riders from the U.S. So that's kind of cool. So anyway, I've arrived at my destination, so I'm out of here. Talk to you guys later.